everyone, Lois here, and I'm back with a brand new interview. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for alerts of when I upload new content to the channel, especially those with disabilities similar to mine. In my latest interview, I interview autistic actor Jonathan Simel, who of course you might know him from the Disney Plus TV series Turner and Hooch. Join me as I talk about that and his career so far and other things. And I'm joined here by autistic actor Jonathan Simel. Hello, everybody. And if you watched Disney Plus last year, he was in Turner and Hooch. He played the brother of Vanessa Langes' character. And he was called Curtis. So, Jonathan, how are you? And welcome to my YouTube channel. Hey, Louis. Um, it's Louis, right? Um, yeah, you can call me Louis or Louis or Lou. It doesn't matter. Louis? Louis? Okay. Uh, or Lou. It doesn't matter. Or Lou. Okay, awesome. Well, Lou, I'm doing really well. Uh, I hope you're doing well as well, despite the dreaded heat in Philly right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's such a it's really cool to be here. Um, this is probably like the first interview I've done with uh, in regards to the show. So awesome. Thanks for having me. Thank you. I'll never forget when you when you seen my review of the show and your character last year on my YouTube mm -hmm. channel and you seen my post on um, Instagram. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, um, it was interesting because uh, the director of that, or no, it was the producer of the show, uh, mentioned me in a mentioned me in a comment on your post. So I had to check it out to see, like, whoa, who's this guy? What, he's talking about me. That's so cool. Awesome. Okay, I want to like talk to this guy because this is this is really cool. It's awesome meeting fans of the show and just talking about it. So yeah, it was that was a really cool moment for me for me as well, and I'm. I'm grateful that we had this chance to talk. Yeah, likewise. Um, okay, first question. How mm -hmm. did you get into acting? Oh, how did I get into acting? Well, I started off... I, I guess you could say it's something I've always kind of been interested in. It started off like when I was really young and I wanted to, and I was watching cartoons and I wanted to... I wanted to get into voice acting. I wanted to try out different voices because that I was I was known as a kid that as the guy that made a lot of funny voices. And uh, I decided, hey, I want to just take some acting classes and uh, just kind of just to see what I can do about it, see where I can go with that. And so I took some act a couple of acting classes when I was twelve, I think, and then I got I contacted an agent. Uh, to see uh, if we can go if we can go into business together, and uh, I was with one agent for a little while until I found out that they strictly did commercials, which I wasn't something I was particularly interested in. I was more interested in more of the um, the episodic um, series or movies or anything uh, somewhere along those lines. And so I contacted another agent um, who could just get me a, a booking right off the bat uh, for a show and not just build me up from commercials. Um, and so I contacted them and uh, we've been in partnership together ever since. And um, yeah, I got into it when I was around, like I started auditioning when I was around 14, 13, 14 years old, somewhere like that. And uh I've been doing it ever since. Well, some actors start out slowly through commercials and then they get discovered and then they're put into movies or TV shows. But I get it. I mean, you didn't want to do commercials. I don't blame you. If I, if I was to get into acting, I certainly would love to try commercials. <laughs> oh, yeah. Again, yeah. Yeah. That, that's just – that would be my way of putting my foot in the door. Yeah, it is a good way of putting your foot in the door. It's a good way to start off because you don't have any lines to memorize when you go into commercials. You just do, they just kind of do what the director tells you. And it's it's kind of like a fun thing to do. Like, and if you have like, if you have nothing going on in the afternoon, um, it's a kind of a 
it's a fun way to just spend your time there. So it's, it's a fun way to act. All right. How did you get the role of Curtis? And what was your reaction when you found out that this was a sequel to the 1989 movie that starred Tom Hanks? Um, so I actually didn't know. I haven't seen I hadn't seen Turner and Hooch um, before I got the role. And so my agent just kind of contacted me saying, hey, um, they want you to audition for this uh, this character. He's on the spectrum um, and he's like, um, and he's part of the show Turner and Hooch. And I'm like, okay, Disney show. Okay, cool, cool. Let's see, let's see what's going on here. And um, I did the audition. I felt like I was kind of just kind of going with the motions, I, which was really interesting. Um, at first, I thought I at first I thought I didn't get it because I just the character was very. I felt like the character didn't fully sink in yet. But then when I got the callback, I was very surprised by that. I was very shocked, and so. I went to the callback. They had all the directors, producers, writers in the room out on Zoom because this was this was a Zoom call. And uh, yeah, I did the, I did the part. I did the scene that they asked me to do. And uh, a couple days, I think later, yeah, a couple days later, I just uh, my agent calls me up and says, "Hey, I got the part," and I'm like, "Wow, wow, that's incredible, awesome!" And then I did some more research on the show because. I'm part of it now. I might as well do what I can. And um, that's when I found out that it was a sequel to, uh, to a movie with Tom Hanks. And I'm like, well, oh, this is really cool. Oh, wow. So they're like, it's like a kind of bringing it back. It's like a set in, set in this time period. Oh, wow. This is, this is kind of cool. Yeah. I just thought it was, I just thought it was really interesting that, um, they uh, made us. They're making. They've made a sequel to that movie, but from way back when. Um, so it was really interesting to get to work with all these different, all these different kinds of talents, all these incredible, wonderful, uh, talented people, actors, writers, directors. It was just um, everybody was so nice on that set, and it was really just a really phenomenal experience. What was it like working with Vanessa Langes playing her brother on screen? She is terrific. She is wonderful. Super nice person. Um, we kind of, we really just kind of bonded like brother and sister on that show. Um, we would like off the side, we would just have like conversations just about life and uh, um, about girls at one point, which was kind of, which was interesting. Um, and yeah, she was a ter really terrific actor, very professional and, um, uh, you know, for having a big sister and who has been doing acting for longer than I have, it's really comforting to have that, um, to have that partner on set and, um, and, uh, work together. We were, yeah, we really really worked well together and it was a really incredible experience to get to work with her. And speaking of Vanessa Lanchies, I've been a huge fan of hers. I've actually seen her in the 2006 gymnastics movie, which is a comedy called Stick It. I first seen her in that one, even though I know she's been acting for for longer. And then in Glee, and of course, mm -hmm. one of my other favorite roles is with her voicing one of the um, Freelanders from Lego Star Wars Freemaker Adventures. Oh, wow. Wow. That's incredible. Besides Vanessa, who else did you enjoy working with? Did you enjoy working with um, Josh Peck, Brandon J. McLaren? I loved working with Josh Peck. Josh is one of the people I um, I was I looked up to when I was younger. I uh, I was a big fan of the show Drake and Josh that he did. Uh, yeah, from the Nickelodeon days. Yeah, from his yeah. Nickelodeon days. Yeah, from the Nickelodeon days. Yeah. So when I saw that he was working on the show, I was like. What? <laughs> I was like jumping around screaming, like shock, like what the heck? Uh, so it was just like an honor, like a real pleasure to, to get to see him, meet him in person. And uh, the guy's just a super nice dude. Yeah, he's always like 
he's always like very welcoming of people and very compassionate and uh just really open to talking yeah he treats it like a bro even though you just met like a few seconds ago which was really cool yeah it was terrific terrific working with him now as for brandon j mclaren i've been a fan of his since he did power rangers spd since he played the red ranger in that series I mean, that was oh, the yeah? first time he did work with Disney when Disney owned the Power Rangers, long before mm. they sold it back to Saban, and then has and then Hasbro bought it from Saban four years ago. But mm. I'm just saying that Brandon J. McLaren's character, I definitely liked how he's depicted as a um, a former U.S. Marine who served in Afghanistan and then worked alongside Josh Peck's character of. Of Scott Jr. Mm-hmm. in the U.S. Marshals, and I think it's kind of cool to see. Yeah, Xavier. Yeah, his name was his character's name was Xavier. I Xavier. Believe. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. Got, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, I was just gonna say I didn't get a, a lot of chances to work with him because we were really in. Uh, we weren't really in a lot of scenes together, I believe. Um. I might have like, yeah, this was so long ago. I don't remember. I might have like said like a word or two to him uh, during the uh, during the wedding scene where we all, when we all like were collected together um, in this one moment. Um, but yeah, we didn't really work together as much, so I don't really have a lot to say of him. But from what I've seen and from the know of the guy, he's a pretty chill dude, and he plays the character really well. And uh, yeah, he just seems like a lot of fun. Seems like a really fun dude. As I said, his character in Power Rangers SPD was a cop, technically. Oh, wow. Okay, that's cool, man. Yeah, so now he's like like a cop in this show, too, so it's like... Exactly. Yeah. So that's awesome. You, you said the wedding scene. You mean the final scene of the, um, of the, of the series before he found out it was going to get cancelled? Yeah, I, yes, the wedding scene, which was in, like, the final scene of the episode, that's where we had all the cast members, like, uh, come together um, in this one moment, and uh, that was the chance where I got to see everyone, um, yeah, and I got to chat with them, and um, I was mostly just uh, sticking around people I knew, so, like, Vanessa, and, uh, and the people that she was... Um, chatting around with and so that that was the moment i really got to see everybody because before that i was mostly in like the training center and uh the house with uh where we give the uh hooch to to the to the kid i forget his name but he was he was also on the spectrum during that episode you mean um, Lucas? You mean you, Lucas? L- Lucas Yao? Yeah, just bring up an yeah. article. I love. Are you talking about the episode "Pup Witness Protection"? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that you was. I love, about yeah, I love that episode. I love how they brought your character in. You know, where you kind of play the central character, and you end up interacting with Lucas's character, Anthony, and. And of course, he's the target of an assassin because that he, because he's seen the the face of the assassin that mm-hmm. the, that the marshals are looking for. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. That was that was the most time I've spent on that show because, um, yeah, my character did play an integral role in that, um, which was really nice because, you know, other than the first episode. My Curtis was just mostly like uh, around the like mostly just around the training center, helping out with the dogs and helping out with uh, uh, with Erica, Vanessa's character. Um, and so it was really just um, it felt. I wanna, what's another way of saying very good? It felt I felt very honored to be able to have a more prominent role in this episode and actually be able and actually have my character be um, an integral piece of it that actually um, help that actually inspires Erica's character and to help out Josh's character, Scott, 
to be able to solve the case. And so having Curtis be an influence to that felt very, what's the word? Um, can't figure out words sometimes. Um, All right. <laughs> felt very uh, satisfying. Yeah. It, it felt good. Yeah, it felt good. It felt good. It felt like my character, like my character was being tossed aside. It felt like this character is important. He's important to the story, important to the world. So just being a part of that episode uh, and part of that whole experience felt very, felt felt very gratifying in a way. Yeah, because I kind of thought a pup witness protection was a good episode. It definitely hit close to me because of being autistic and I kind of love this episode and that's what inspired me to review the show as a whole and also mention the movie. And speaking of the original movie, the only original actor from that film to return is Reginald Val Johnson who 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 played Scott Sr.'s partner in the film. You, you might mm -hmm. also know him from Family Matters as Carl Winslow and if you've seen mm -hmm. Die Hard as Al Pal. Mm -hmm. That's where I that and of course the original Turner and Hooch movie. That's where I know of his work from. Mostly mainly Family mm -hmm. Matters and Die Hard. That's how I became a fan of Reginald Val Johnson. Oh yeah. Did you yeah. meet him? Did you meet him during the finale scene? Yeah, I talked to him one I talked to him for a little bit. Yeah, he was a very chill dude, very much just grounded. I want to say full of light. I think for the moment that I um, for the moment I had ha got to speak with him, I could feel like this like energy coming from him. This like um, this like life presence in a way. Like he was very grounded, very present. Um, not only not only um in life, but in, also in his work. So um. Yeah, again, I only got to see him like during the final scene of the series, um, but and I talked with him for a little bit. And the, but the moment I uh, the moment that I shared with him was very was very nice. Yeah, we had taught, we yeah, we just uh, chatted about um, some of my current events that were happening at the time. And so, yeah, he seems like a very very nice dude. And um, yeah, I would have liked to talk with him more if I had the chance. Understandable. Um... If there was a sequel, if there was um, a second season, though, it ain't gonna happen. But I was, I would love to have seen a second season. I would love to have seen Scott possibly tie the knot with Erica. <laughs> oh and, yeah, and of course, Hooch settling down with Angel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those two are really cute together, um, and and Josh and Erica and. Uh, Scott and Erica. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I would have loved to see a second season, but, um, you know, life happens and uh, sometimes things don't always work out. But uh, I'm just grateful for the experience that I have. And uh, overall, it seemed like we had a fun time and uh, everybody was just so welcoming and so grateful to be there. And so, you know, it's not just about um, what didn't happen. It's more about what did and what the experience we had. And I'm just grateful that I got to be a part of it. Yeah. That's Disney for you. They decide whether it should be a limited series or the series should have more than one season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes that happens. Sometimes, like, shows, um, you know, you put in a lot of effort into a show and uh, only for it to get just one season. And, um, and then suddenly, like, I guess it's not coming back for a second one. Um I'm not sure entirely of the reasons behind it. Um, I would have loved to yeah. there to be a second season and uh, possibly have possibly have Curtis be a more prominent role and uh, be able to play the character again and hang, and uh, work with everybody once more. Yeah, because um, I would have loved to have seen more of Curtis. I would have loved to have seen more of Scott Jr. and Erica and. I would have loved to possibly seen Scott get promoted in the U.S. Marshals. And, yeah. And, you know, 
continue working with Hooch because I. So do you, so I'm um, speaking of dogs. I'm going to ask this question, Jonathan. Do you have any dogs of your own? Um, I had a dog that uh for many years, but he just recently passed away in oh, I'm January. Sorry I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, that's okay. Because a month before that, I lost my own dog who was a oh. rescue. He was named oh. Potter. Got him 10 years ago. Actually, in the process of getting a new dog now. A puppy named Vinny. Vinny. Aww. Yeah, he's a, he's a dox hound. He's a dox hound. <sighs> oh. I'm, I'm a dog lover. My mother... Dog lover, yeah. Me too. Yeah my, yeah, my mother, she definitely loves dogs. She definitely loved Turn and Hooch when she seen the original movie. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a dog lover too. So uh, that was actually one of the <laughs> one of the uh, questions that uh, they asked me before uh, I got the role uh, if I was comfortable with dogs. I'm like, yeah, my dog is my best friend. And uh, so same yeah. here. I'm comfortable with dogs, but though there are some dogs that can be skittish, there are. Yeah, I mean, I love animals too. Yeah. Yeah, I have another question that relates to acting. Do you have any potential mm -hmm. roles coming up in the future? You don't so want to talk. Hard. If you don't want oh. to talk about it, and you know, and you're not allowed to because of you know, you know, user, just you know, you're mm -hmm. not allowed to talk about it until official press release is done. Yeah, um, I'll say this: there's nothing I can say at the moment because, um. It's either it's either it, it's either I can't say just yet or nothing has happened yet. I'm still auditioning and I am still like I want to say really sorry. That's understandable. You, you don't mm. have to say anything. Yeah. I respect I respect how how the business goes. You know, you're not allowed to say mm. something until an official press release is is done. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but uh, life goes on, and um, yeah, I'm still like it's still auditioning and uh, still working away with that. I did just recently have a uh, movie I was in get premiered a couple, I think, yeah, two months ago down in San Francisco. What's it called? Um, when time got louder. When time? Oh, is that available on any streaming platform? Right now, it's just doing a festival run, oh. and so it'll. Yeah, so it'll come to streaming next year, I believe. Oh, because I would love to review that. I would love to review that. I really would. Awesome. Yeah, and it is It is about a... Um, it is about a character who's on the spectrum, which I play as well. Um, and so I was really grateful to work on that as well. And um, yeah, it's just doing a festival right, right now, doing going to all sorts of different uh, countries around the world. And... Um, yeah, uh, you'll have to. Yeah, it'll come to streaming next and uh, during the spring of next year, I believe. Oh, you mean spring twenty twenty three? Yes, that's good. That's good to know. Um, and speaking of me acting, let me tell you this: I did amateur acting when I was in high school. I did. I did a. I was involved in a video that was filmed on location at the school I was a student at, called Stop and Think, which is mainly about peer conflict resolution I oh, also yeah? I also did some plays in school as well oh, oh that's awesome dude that's yeah, that's well, that, that's the closest thing I got to acting but I'm not a professional like you or or anyone else I know that might have done it but I am involved with with um I'm involved with things like um I'm involved with this nonprofit based out of Chicago Mm -hmm. In their suburb of Downers Grove, it's called Dive Heart. You know, Dive Heart. Oh, dive let me, Heart. Mm -hmm, let me, okay. Let me go get. Let me go get one of their shirts. I'll be. I'll be right back for a second. I'm back, Jonathan. This is what it looks like. Oh, uh, diveheart.org. Oh, awesome. Yeah. What kind of place do you guys put on? 
Um, it's not a play. It's actually a scuba diving organization. Oh, it's scuba diving organization. Okay. Mm -hmm. dive oh, that's why I dive heart. Okay, that makes sense. Because yeah, you're not, diving. I, yeah, uh, we do. We do trips. We do trips to Cozumel, which of course are already on one as we speak. And I'm uh, actually, I'm actually going to be going back there myself in th this this December. And and of course, they're also the focus of a documentary that that was released recently on Amazon Prime and is now available also on Tubi. It's called Ooh. Adapting to Dive. Adapting to Dive? All yes. right. Awesome. And they do work with autistic people, too, because I'm not the only one in this organization. I know this young man named Nick Johnson, and he, yeah, he's part of the organization. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool to hear that you're doing that, man. Yeah. Um, so, so with it's called Adapting to Dive. That's on Tubi, you said? Yeah, and on Amazon Prime. And on Amazon Prime. All right, I'll be sure to check those out. Yeah. Because I know a lot of people that are in that documentary, including the um, the president, CEO, and the executive director of the organization. Their names are Jim Elliott and Tina Marie Hernandez. Oh, okay. Awesome, dude. And of course... I, one of the reasons why I also became a YouTuber was because, you know, I wanted to, you know, show that, um, people on the spectrum can do anything and they, and that they're, that they don't do, that, that, that they're not all crazy and because there are some people out there that have put content out there that kind of inappropriate and, you know, mm -hmm. and also given people like us on the spectrum a bad name. Yeah, for sure. There is a lot of um, there is a lot of misrepresentation um, of people who are put on the spectrum. Exactly. And uh, yeah, and I feel like it's um, it's it's just a lack of education because exactly. not a lot. Yeah, exactly. Not a lot of individuals are aware that there is people with autism or like there's a there's a spectrum of autism it's not just like one category it's not just um one specific type of person and each person with autism has a unique variation of it and uh there's a there is a uh quote that i heard someone say where it was like if you met one if you've met one person with autism you've only met one person with autism because it's a spectrum mm -hmm. and it's different across every single individual. Like, um, like, like, um, like my autism is, is different from your autism, let's say, in, in which like we are sensitive to different, um, what's the word? Different, I don't know, stimuluses, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, I get, um, like for example, I get overwhelmed when I'm around too many people. Thing, but, but yeah. not, I don't, but not always, but I'm talking about, mm -hmm. talking about, you know, some sounds, you know, just, you know, because it's kind of hard for me to work, and yes, mm -hmm. and yes, let me tell you about, let me tell you about what it was like to, to work, work, I was also once a lifeguard too for the Y, and yeah, and it wasn't easy, and believe me, it wasn't easy to get certified. I had to, I had to study the book. I had to swim laps. And you, you get the gist. And then, of course, I was also a swim instructor's aide too. Of course, I have worked with children before. And of course, despite despite this job, of course, I no longer work for them because I lost my job because of the pandemic. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. And of course, when I mentioned Dive Heart earlier, I couldn't go to Cozumel last December when they were filming it because of the pandemic and the fact it was my sister's 35th birthday and we were heading down to Walt Disney World to celebrate her birthday right around that time period. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. And, and just like there's no season two of Turner Hooch, which is really up to Disney, 
we're, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna have to um we're gonna have to cut it. We're gonna have to end it too because we're running out of time. Yes, I noticed that as well. Well, here's the last question I have for you, Jonathan. Um, what advice would you give to those who are on the spectrum who want to get into acting, just like you? What advice would I give? Just do it. Um, your autism is not something that holds you back. I would say it's a superpower because acting is an act of vulnerability. It's an act of bravery. And um, I would say the more sensitive you are, the more... What's the word? The easier it is for you for you to access those feelings that society tells us to bury down. And um, I would say, just me personally, this is how I view it. And to anybody watching, you can view it your own way. I see it, my vulnerability and my hypersensitivity as a technique that I can use to react and harness in my craft. So find what works for you, um, have fun with it, and don't let the stigma stop you because the stigma is inaccurate. The only thing that's accurate is what you bring to the table. That's good to know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And before we go, Jonathan, I also want to say thank you for your time. And of it's course, my honor, dude. And of course, if you ever want to join Dive Heart, just I'll message you the link on Instagram. Yeah, for sure, dude. If I ever love, get interested, you mm -hmm. would love you would love Mexico. You really would. It's you would love mm -hmm. Cozumel. It's very beautiful there. Uh, yeah, Mexico is a really beautiful city or country. Yeah, and Cozumel is a great island. Well, mm -hmm. Jonathan, take care. Take care, Lewis. And that's all for this interview, everyone. Well. That was a great interview I did, and it was a pleasure to have Jonathan here on this channel, and he was cool, told me about some tidbits from behind the scenes of the show, and also told me about what it's like to be an actor, and talked about other things as well. I enjoyed doing this amazing interview. In the meantime, this is Lewis saying, Thanks for watching, everyone! You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, and TikTok. Remember, it's time for adventure!